So there was a time when I had completely lost the motivation and the hope to study medicine at the University of Oslo here in Norway. Yet here I am now in the fourth year of medical school at this very university. Now what exactly is my journey? How did I get here? This is what I'll be sharing with you guys in this video. So if you are looking to study medicine in Norway, then this video will surely add some value to you. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. On this channel, I share my life as a medical student in Norway amongst other valuable stuff such as effective studying based on evidence and science. So if that sounds interesting then make sure you hit that subscribe button. So this video will be divided into two chunks. Firstly, my personal journey into medicine at the University of Oslo here in Norway and secondly, how exactly did I study in high school or in college in Norway to be able to smash a high enough GPA in order to get into medicine here in Oslo. In part two of this video, I'll be answering some of the questions that you guys have sent me on my Instagram. And as I always say, since time is the most precious thing in the world, everything will be timestamped in the description box below so you guys can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you want to watch. I was raised in Lahore in Pakistan and there I spent approximately around 16 years of my life before moving to Norway in June 2013 and to be more precise it was the 19th of June in 2013. When I lived in Pakistan I'm proud to say that I was a bright student back then so the goal was always to become a doctor and there were two main reasons for this. So firstly my mom's a doctor and that really sort of pulled me towards this field as well. Not that she forced me or anything but it's just I think it's natural to sort of idealize your um, um, parents. So the thing is that, okay, that's the first factor of why I wanted to study medicine. And secondly, the sort of background and culture I came from, it was very natural for somebody or for a student with above average grades to pursue medicine. I think that was like the default thing that any bright student would do, like, you know, automatically pursue medicine. So these were the two main reasons why I wanted always, I always wanted to pursue medicine. And I still remember how the password to my laptop back in the days so it used to be the word doctor. Before moving to Norway in 2013, I completed my GCSE O levels and managed to perform really well in those as well. So I moved to Norway and the first thing that really that, 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 that caught my eye was the culture or the culture shock. I received a massive culture shock because everything was absolutely different. It was a whole new world for me. So from the language, from the culture, the society, the people. And even though everybody over here speaks English and especially the younger generation is really fluent in English, I still felt like an outsider because I had this barrier in front of me and this really made me realize that okay unless and until I remove this language barrier I won't be able to really integrate into the Norwegian society despite of the fact that most people do know English. So naturally the first thing for me was to enroll myself in Norwegian language course from August 2013 to June 2014 if I'm right yes June 2014 and now you must be thinking that okay things must have gone, must have gotten a bit easier because he probably removed the language barrier and you know freed his chains and yes even though I did get fluent in Norwegian after in around four months I, I things did not get that easy so quickly because um, it was during this very moment or during this very period that I lost the motivation to study medicine and why exactly did this, did this happen because apparently getting into medicine in Norway or especially University of Oslo is considered as this big thing because of the insanely high merit requirements or the insanely high GPA requirements so during this period when I was learning the Norwegian language I came across um, countless people who told me that okay Arham stop dreaming about studying medicine here because um, the, the, the GPA requirements are just so unrealistically high and me being young and dumb back then really let this get to me and started to think that okay well how can somebody like me who barely knows the Norwegian language be able to pass the Norwegian high school uh, with good enough grades to actually uh, get into medicine at the University of Oslo in Norway. So this really made me slowly drift away from my lifetime dream of becoming a doctor. Okay so let's fast forward to college. So in June 2014 I enrolled myself in IB International Baccalaureate because I thought that I'm not strong enough yet in Norwegian to actually attend the Norwegian high school system and hence I went for IB which was taught in English. But after two weeks at IB I quickly switched back to the Norwegian high school system because I thought that okay I'm gonna be living here in Norway and I'm gonna be spending my life here and I also want to attend university in Norway so what's the point of me attending something or going to an international high school or uh, attending high school in English because I would also end up forgetting most of the Norwegian which I had literally spent an entire year learning right so I that's when I think thought that um, 
attending the Norwegian high school system would be a better option for me. So I quickly switched from IB to uh, Vidrigomlen, which is a Norwegian high school or Norwegian college. Now, there were again two problems over here. Firstly, my lack of motivation to study medicine in Norway because apparently I was thinking that, okay, it's not really possible. So what's the point of trying to achieve high grades when it's not even possible for somebody like me? And secondly, I was not really feeling myself at home um, at this school that I was attending or in my class. So this made the motivation to study medicine or achieve high grades even less. Uh, and uh, as somebody who was a bright student back in the days, I started to think that, okay, I'll just go with the flow, you know, just to see what the future holds for me. So instead of working hard for my grades, this is basically how I started to approach things. So college in Norway lasts for three years. And um, after the first year of high school, I ended up changing my school. And this was actually one of the best decisions I had, I have ever made in my life, to be very honest, because... Uh, I, I believe that social, a good social circle and having fun at school is one of the most important factors when it comes to having or achieving good academic performance or achieving high grades as well because unless and until you are having fun at school and, ha and are really thriving socially, it's not really possible for you to motivate yourself to you know achieve high grades. So I ended up switching schools and um, even though I was having fun uh, at this new place and really made some really good friends which I still have really good contact with um, I was still not really working hard for my grades because this thing about not getting into medicine was had really gotten into my head I was thinking that, okay man, it's not really it's not impossible to achieve such a high merit uh, so just go with the flow so this basically went on for the entire second year of high school as well but then all of a sudden things completely changed in the last year of high school where i received this sudden reality check that okay there is one more year to go before i get thrown into the adult life and i still don't know what i'm doing with my life so i need to get myself together and you know really start working towards my lifetime goal of becoming a doctor so i said to myself that okay i need to stop being a chimp and at least do your best because if you don't do that then you will basically be regretting this for the rest of your life and saying to yourself that maybe i should have worked a little bit harder maybe i should have given that one more shot and maybe things would have worked out. However, the problem here was now that since I had slacked off the first two years of high school, now I needed to perform, to achieve A stars in basically every single subject in the, in the last year of high school in order to compensate for my previous laziness and achieve a high enough GPA um, to get into medicine. Anyway, I started working really, really hard um, and uh, because this was the only thing that I could do. So let's fast forward this to June 2017, right after completing my final exams in high school, I flew to Poland because the backup plan was to study medicine in Poland or in Eastern Europe if I did not get into medicine in Norway. So I went to, I went to Poland and took my admission exam or my admission test and got into medicine in Poland. And this was actually before I got the result from my high school exams. So I came back home to Norway and I received my result and uh, I had basically, long story short, achieved my goal. So I had managed to smash a high enough GPA in order to get into medicine in Oslo. And yeah, this was basically my story. And the point of sharing my journey with you guys was not to boast, be arrogant or, you know, show that I'm a genius or something because I really am not. Uh, without the support of friends, family and God, of course, I couldn't really have achieved anything in life. However, the only thing that I really want to emphasize upon is that please, please, please do not listen to people and do not listen to what others have to say because 99% of the times, what people say are plain rumors with extremely little truth to it. Go for your dreams and please do not let others' opinions affect you or your dreams because I let this happen and I had to suffer for like three years of my life. Anyway, now let's move on to part two of this video where I break down how I studied uh, for my finals in the third year of high school. All right, so nowadays I really preach about the two most effective techniques for studying, active recall and spaced repetition. And what exactly are these two techniques? Well, active recall is basically the act of testing yourself because our brain has developed in a way that enables it to forget information very quickly because it only wants to store the information that is the most necessary for our survival. So any information which is not necessary for our survival is basically just consuming 
unnecessary space and hence has to be deleted. And the brain it has developed to be really good at this. So when we actually test ourselves consistently, we are telling our brains what is important and what is not important. Because when you act, when you actively retrieve information from your brain, you are telling your brain that, okay, this particular piece of information is important and hence needs to be taken care of. Whereas anything with that we don't really recall or retrieve from our memory, that is considered as trash and hence is deleted. So in essence, by doing active recall and consistently testing ourselves, we are creating this filtering mechanism uh, whereby we tell our brain what exactly is important and hence needs to be taken good care of and must be um, incorporated into our long-term memory and also what which piece of information is not important and hence can be deleted or filtered out. In order to achieve the most optimal results, you can combine active recall with space repetition which basically means that you are testing yourself on different topics with increasing intervals because you want to disturb this phenomenon called the forgetting curve which is a well-known phenomenon in psychology. So the forgetting curve basically illustrates how quickly our brain forgets information after first learning it. And in order to disrupt this curve, we need to frequently test ourselves on that particular topic uh, the first few days. And then afterwards, we can increase the intervals between these repetitions. And this will soon end up making that curve flatter and flatter. And hence, that piece of information which we have tested ourselves upon uh, consistently will be incorporated into our long-term memory. If you want to know more about this in detail, then you can kindly check out my videos on these two topics. Anyway, this was me talking about active recall and space repetition. But back in the days when I was in college, I did not have a single clue about effective, about effective studying. Yet, luckily enough, unconsciously, I was still practicing these two methods. Now allow me to explain this further. Okay, so I was not taking any notes in college and evidence has also shown that how note taking is not the most optimal thing to do and hence I've never really been a fan of note taking. Uh, but the thing is, I was never, never really taking notes and this forced me to rely on active recall and space repetition unconsciously without knowing it. So what I would do is that after my lectures or after my class, uh, I would go home and, uh, you know, do the questions or practice the questions from those from the topics that I had learned that particular day. For example, if we if we learned about let's say redox reactions or organic chemistry in school, then I would basically go home and practice the questions from the chapter in the book or do some past paper questions related to that very topic. So I was actually actively testing my understanding of these subjects or, or these topics that we had learned in school. And then I would make a list of all the questions that I found difficult or hard and I wasn't able to solve at home. And the next day I would go to school and go to my teacher and ask them to explain me uh, those very questions. And hence, this resulted in me getting really good at my weak points. And secondly, since I was constantly testing myself on that information, I was consolidating all that information in into my long-term memory and this resulted in the fact that when my exams got closer I had already I already knew most of the curriculum so the understanding of the curriculum was already there all I now needed to do in order to ace my exams was to practice tons and tons of past paper questions or like the exam questions from the previous years and that's all I did I would sit down every single day and solve past paper questions. So I actually ended up doing like all the previous exams from the past five or six years. And the biggest benefit of doing this was that I developed a great understanding of the kind of questions that you get on your exams or in your finals and how and what is the best way of solving these questions in order to achieve the best possible grades. So the kind of questions that I got on my exam did not really come as a shock to me because I had practiced the same type of questions multiple times before. Also, before I end this video, I would like to highlight one extremely important motivational factor, and that is finding a good study partner. Because once you find somebody who has similar goals and amb ambitions as you, then you can basically help each other out and you know, just solve those questions together and everything becomes much more fun. So try and find somebody who has similar goals as yourself, so you guys can simply work together and hunt those ambitions down. That's a wrap for today, Sapiens. So in the next part of this video, I'll be answering the questions that you guys have sent me. So stay tuned for that. If you found this video useful, then you might also enjoy watching this video where I talk about why I stopped taking notes in medical school. And also do not forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.